All right, got Drug Dealer Simulator 2. Uh, real quick, I just wanted to touch on a few things from what I see on the forums and online. Looks like there's some confusion on some pretty basic stuff, but I can see how it's confusing. Um, so growing weed is pretty straightforward, especially here at the hideout when your you're starting hideout is pretty well equipped. Looks like I accidentally deleted some heavy barrels or something. But uh, anyways, um, the grow box is obviously essential for growing weed initially. It's what you're started with, so it, it works out well. Uh, once you get seeds, uh, fertilizer, and water, you're basically good to go. When I first started, I was confused because here I got some water. Um, I could not figure out how to water my plants. I kept trying to add the water, and it just is not working. So after much trial and error, I realized that you don't add the raw ingredients to the plant itself. The raw ingredients are always have to be unpacked uh, in the packing table, and it will go into your substance storage. So, so I got water already in my storage, so if I wanted to grow a plant, I could, but just for purposes of demonstrations, we'll go ahead and do this. So, all right, so again, my storage space is low, so it's not letting me pack anymore. Um, but again, that's how you would do it. Drag the water to here, the water goes from there into your substance storage, and then it is usable uh, for your plants. Likewise, I have seeds in my storage, so it will pull that, and I have fertilizer in my storage, so it will also pull that. So I have everything in my storage that I need to grow the plants, and it will tell you so here. So it's simply just a matter of hitting craft. Uh, you can do the max quantity or however many it allows you to do. Um, I've got some that was already grown, so I'm gonna go ahead and retrieve that. All right, and then I got the new plants growing now. Um, I do recommend getting the LED bulb from one of the vendors. Uh, it increases the boost production by 15% and reduces power consumption by 25%. Um, it's a pretty cheap investment. So anyways, uh, once you grow your plant and you retrieve the leaves as I've done so there, then you can go to your dryer that you conveniently come with. And I have 70, so we'll go ahead and pick the number. You, if you hit max, it's going to take you well beyond what you have. Um, so, unless you have 100, don't hit max. Just type in what, whatever you have. In this case, I got 70, so I'm going to type in 70 and craft. From there, as the weed is done, it will go from there into my drug substance storage. Um, as far as this journal that tells you the production recipes, so I was under the impression for the longest time that you needed to have everything um, that was listed. So for this marijuana, for instance, obviously for the seed piling, uh, number one, a grow box, obviously that's essential. But for number two, you have three different methods. Uh, you have the drying rack, the hybrid dryer, or the drying outdoor rack. Uh, since this hideout conveniently came with the hybrid dryer, that's what we're using. It also looks like they are listed from top down to least efficient. No, that's not really true either, because the hybrid dryer, I believe, is the most efficient. Um, with the amphetamines. So the amphetamine confused me at first for a while too because I was thinking I needed I needed all of those um, equipment for the soaking and then I needed all that equipment for the thermal. But that's not the case. You need one equipment for soaking and you need one equipment for the thermal of what is listed. Now obviously I think in this one it kind of gets better as you go down the list. Um, but I'll go into the, the amphetamines here in a second. But the basic gist of it is Everything has to be, all your ingredients and raw materials have to be unpacked into your substance storage. Um, and then they can be used efficiently throughout whatever you're trying to do. Once you start getting drug storage in your substance storage, then we'll go to the packaging. You have to make sure you have baggies. I got a bunch here and I got a bunch in my hideout. We'll just hit the plus. We're going to select our drug, cannabis. And then you can change the weight to whatever you want. Generally speaking, unless I'm taking a big package to a dealer to push it for me, I generally just keep it at one gram and change the quantity to 40, which was the max at the time. Pretty sure it still is. And then hit add. So it's going to automatically package it up here. I'm going to pack and take. And it's going to add one to my inventory. The reason I go 40 uh, and the ones is because when you've got all these customers, um, most of them are going to get like between one and six grams. It's easier just to have, to give them uh, whatever they need in one gram packages versus carrying around a bunch of two grams and three grams and four grams. 
uh, space wise it just makes so much more sense to save so much time uh, having everything breasted down into one so I can see here I have nothing over one gram packages I got a bunch of 40s and a bunch of 40s on the uh, amp as well so that saves a lot of time when I first started I was making like little packages for everything a bunch of twos and a bunch of threes and a bunch of fours and a bunch of fives and that's just waste time I will make a big one every once in a while I can say a bunch of like 10 uh, grams or 5 grams um, to carry to a big driller to have them push it for me but otherwise I don't do that I'm go ahead and carry this so I'll go ahead and get the cams going alright so as far as amp amp is a little different uh, I don't have the equipment for it here in this hideout but Marcus is going to be your go-to guy here. And I didn't know this yeah, when I, up? until I was many hours into the game. Early on, you can just buy amp from Marcus. Uh, um, he sells it by the package, and then he sells a little bit bulkier here. Um, you could buy those. Again, like I said, break it down on your substance packaging table, and then repackage it how you want it. I also strongly recommend buying this, the poly, uh, whatever the fuck it's called. Uh, Finny, Lip, whatever. Yeah, that. Buy that whenever he has it available. Every time he has it available. Even before you start making your own. That way, when you are set to start making your own, you have a surplus of this material because it is essential uh, for making amp. I haven't been able to find it anywhere else. Um, but that's not to say it's not anywhere else. I just haven't yet found a place. Or if I did, I just overlooked it and didn't recognize it. There's chemicals and shit for sale everywhere. And I haven't quite uh, memorized them all just yet. So anyways, anytime I come here to this hideout, I always check with him uh, and buy this chemical if he has any. Um, and if I do need amp, I will buy it from him uh, just to keep me going. I think I've got plenty for now, so I'm not really going to buy any of that. Uh, I will also buy ethanol as well. And I don't have space, so I'm just going to buy a little bit. Okay, so. Cool. Hang in there. From there, we're going to head over to my place where I have the ability to make amp. Somebody wants something. I do recommend upgrading your boat uh, pretty early on. One you start with is really a piece of shit. Um, yeah, kind of run, I guess. Anyways, um, yeah, your starting boat is a piece of shit. I uh, strongly recommend buying them as early as you can. Uh, they're pretty cheap, 120, 150, something like that, 1,000 of each year, decent amount of money that I got. But it'll save you from having to rely on these ferries that go everywhere. Um, so yeah, upgrade your boat. Starting hideout is actually pretty good. Comes with a lot of storage space. Or at least a good initially. I see I'm missing two barrels now from the last patch. I can't tell if that's because of the patch or if I accidentally removed something. I was under the impression that you cannot make adjustments to that original hideout when you add it or subtracting things. So I'm not quite sure where I have two of my large storage barrels. But it won't take you long to expand and get other places. Uh, it'll be essential for uh, 
getting workers and other dealers established. Motherfucker, I went to the wrong place. But he has, well, yeah, once you start finding employees, you know, people that sell drugs for you, uh, like this guy here, he works for me. Um, you can only put them to work on an island where you have a house so you can put a employee locker for them. And then you can assign them to work. So on this particular island, I have three workers. And here are their three lockers. And then I have a dealer set up to keep them supplied as long as I keep some drugs in my stash here. So anyways, this, this place is more set up to build, to make amp for now. Uh, again, I bought a lot of equipment. You don't necessarily need all of it. You need some of it. Uh, depends how efficient you want to use and how much chemicals and what type of chemicals you want to use. Um, for amp, I've been using this big thing here because it just makes a shitload. Um, so I've been going for the amp and said amp the amphetamine salts uh, based on this middle one here, which requires that penalty chemical I was telling you about, um, acetone, and then the ethanol, which again I was saying we needed to buy. Um, this great big vat, if I max it, will make 1.4 kilos. Um, of the amp salts so you see here i got a bunch of my storage so i'm still making it so i like this bet because it makes a bunch of it and i could just kind of put it on cook and just let it do its thing come back later and turn the amp salts into amp so anyways it has other ingredients or i'm sorry other methods of making the same thing uh, i haven't been able to find this potassium hydroxide yet so i'm not sure where that's at um, otherwise i got two methods here so i can use the acetone or i can use the acetic acid um, I've been using the acetone version because it has a slightly higher yield. Um, acetic acid, you see here the output is 5 grams versus 7 grams on the acetone. So again, you want to make sure you have all your chemicals uh, correctly put into here. So My storage here is much higher. You see I got 260 kilos of storage space. So I've invested a lot of storage space into here. So we're going to go ahead and unpack all this stuff. Uh, trash bottles will generate. Um, I actually will let them stock up and then put them in my inventory and sell them to the old lady on the starter island. I'm not really hard up for cash, but there's no sense in just... I used to just take them outside and throw them on the ground. Uh, now I sell them for a little bit extra money. So here you can see I have actually 200 grams of actual amp, and then I got 1.3 kilos of the salts to make more amp. So again, this is what I'm using to get the salts, although there is other methods... Um, these little small fermentation vats are quite efficient and cheap. Um, again, their uh, their yield is a little smaller naturally because it's a much smaller size. But it basically has the same. The math comes out about the same uh, as far as what you're getting versus your materials you're putting in. Um, again, it's the same thing. One's a acetone and one's acetic acid. Uh, again acetone producing the greater yield but with these you can only do 20 at a time and compared to the 100 uh, it makes just much more sense but again it's an example of um, not needing everything like here so you can see on the left for soaking I prefer the homemade soaking vat um, I haven't got the laboratory soaking vat yet although I'm sure that's pretty expensive but pretty efficient so I'll probably get that next but in the meantime I like the homemade soaking vat because it produces a lot now over here on number two, as far as heating, uh, the stoves, the stove is the least efficient. You're going to lose product on that. I don't use it. Um, the electric, pr tr electric pressure cooker is another option. Uh, again, that has a smaller yield. And then you have the laboratory autoclave and the laboratory water bath, of those which I have. So, so once we actually get the, the amphetamine salts from those, we can come over here and make actual amp. So I could use the autoclave... 
uh, and I can make 30 grams um, on this, on the autoclave. Um, over here, in the water bath, I can make 90 grams. Um, so that's obviously the better method. And this just does vinegar. Um, this is what the pressure cooker does. Oh, shit, wrong button. Pressure cooker does 20. So not very efficient, but you're not really losing any product. Uh, the stove. Uh, see here, so we can we can use the stove. We get these red warnings. Uh, so this the stove is the least efficient method possible. You need a pot too. So there's the pot. Um, stove least efficient for everything, I believe. Uh, I'm probably just not gonna probably just gonna take this stove out. I don't ever intend on using it unless I need to use it to make like crack or something later. I ain't got that far. Um, so yeah, uh, stove, not a good option unless you're just really, really trying to penny pinch, in which case you're still gonna lose money uh, on your output. Uh, five grams of salt for not even a gram of actual drugs. Uh, so I don't recommend that. So we'll go over here and uh, so I've got plenty of salts. So we'll go ahead and go to max craft. So now I'm crafting an actual amp drug based off of the salts that I've already extracted. And I can do the same thing here. I can get them all going, really. Get that going. So the autoclave, I'm sorry, the centrifuge extracts acetic acid from vinegar, uh, which is good. It's, vinegar is cheaper, and uh, it's not a bad way to do it. Um, you don't need the centrifuge to do this. The centrifuge is rather expensive. You could alternatively use the chemistry table uh, and do the same thing. So extract water and uh, acetic acid from vinegar. I got this lab table. I haven't really done anything with it yet. Uh, so I'm, I guess maybe they'll make my own drugs or something. I, don't know. I haven't got a worker there yet. Um, these are storage containers. These are large, the largest you can get. They are what add uh, storage space to your substance storage. So that's why my storage here is so large. I'm, I'm using 176 uh, kilos of 260. So I got a lot of storage space left, and I can still expand more if need be. So those great big jumps are an excellent way. Uh, shit, I got them late for an appointment. Um, these are the excellent way to uh, expand your storage once you find where they're at. Alternatively, you got these little small ones down here. Um, those are available easier uh, in one of the starting spots. Uh, those will still expand as well. So that's, that's a good to have. So yeah, um, that's really about it as far as making amp and weed. Um, I wish I could think of anything else that caused me uh, confusion when I first started. Um, now once you start assigning dealers, you can press tab and it will show you some of the local ones on the top right. And it also tells you how much drugs they have left. So if you look at Yolanda Vera at the top, she has 23 grams of amp left on her and 34 grams of weed. Um, I think I'm supplying these ones myself. I don't think I have an auto supplier for them. Uh, so I would need to like go there. Michael, Christopher, he's getting low on cannabis. Uh, so is Mark. All of them are getting really low. Uh, so I'll need to pay them a visit and restock their little stash spots here. Uh, these guys, I set a dealers to them. So I don't have to do anything for them. Uh, it's kind of nice. But... Yeah, uh, like I said, the biggest obstacles for me or confusion was uh, substance storage, uh, getting used to the fact that you don't add raw materials directly to anything that you're trying to do. Always has to be broken down on the laboratory trays. So the materials are put down in your substance storage. From there, they're extracted automatically into whatever drug you're trying to make. And again, like I said, you don't need to buy all that fancy equipment. Um, buy whatever one works best because they work to some of that expensive equipment is rather expensive. Money is fairly easy to come by. Uh, but at the time, you're going to be trying to upgrade your boat, find your hideouts, find your workers. You know, you just be uh, uh, You can always pick up these little amber crystals on the beach and turn them into gold lady for money. Uh, I personally don't do that. I'm not that hard up for money. I'll tell you that back. I'll really sell the occasional. Uh, but one thing I have yet to do is make uh, these fucking baskets out of uh, leaves. 
pick up leaves on the ground and make baskets and sell the baskets. So I've only got one dealer assigned to this island. So he needs two uh, grams. So see here, I'll just drag my whole thing over here. Go to confirm. Sometimes I'll give extra weight, even if it's just a gram, uh, an extra gram, uh, anything over will uh, give you a bonus reputation and drug demand. Uh, so early on, especially if you're just swimming in, in drugs, you most likely will be uh, once you get a couple of, uh, of plants going. Uh, giving it extra, I'll show you this guy. So this guy wants two grams of weed, so I'm going to go ahead and give him just three. Whatever. Right. So now I get a plus five reputation bonus for bonus dope and a plus three demand for bonus dope. And at one extra gram, it didn't really cost me anything, you know. Listen, I'm not a big deal at all. This is my dealer for this area. Good day, boss. Yeah, heard him. Oh, fuck it. Oh, there he is. Again, there's no money or anything to collect because I got him set up with somebody who does all that for me. Uh, otherwise, I would have to come here and hit his stash points up and drop a package in. I mean, I probably still could, just to show you. So we'll give him uh, five. You got to select the dealer. Hit it, confirm. So also, it'll show you. So I've got the, the spot. I'll hit F to give him whatever I want. Let's say I want to give him some uh, amp. I'm going to give him 10 grams of amp. So I don't, I don't have to supply this guy. He's, he's already fallen in my supply chain. So I'll put 10 grams or 10 bags. I'll confirm. Uh, when I hover over him, it will show what he has. So he actually does need some anyways. I don't know why he's out. Other dealers should be given him. Uh, so anyways, I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and up that. I'm going to go ahead and give him all of this. Confirm. You have to select the name and then confirm again. The package has been dropped. Now, if you hit there, it, it will say a drop time. So it takes him three minutes or whatever to come get the package before it will actually reflect in his inventory of sellable goods. So, anyways, that is about the uh, gist of things that were a little confusing to me at first. Oh, also, I don't have anybody to schedule. Appointments are open until 7 When you're scheduling people, hopefully somebody texts me. Um, pay attention that you schedule people to the same island at the same time. At first, I was really careless with the people who were texting me, requesting stuff, and I was just lumping them all in together, not realizing that they were on three or four different islands. So I try to pick one time frame for like all my jungle people, I'll pick another time frame. Then once you start getting dealers set up, um, obviously that takes more than a little bit after that. Um, but then every once in a while you will realize you accidentally schedule somebody from an oddball island onto a time frame when you get them to need to. And they can be a little bit of a pain to ass. Although, missing an appointment and losing a little bit of reputation is no big deal. Uh, you easily gain that. Uh, reputation back pretty quickly. So, there's another one of my dealers over here. She's set up with somebody to supply her. This is another hideout. This is a pretty cheap hideout, too. It's more probably one, a good one to buy early on. It was like 300,000, something like that. Uh, throwing stuff outside. Storage containers again, super handy. Every hideout has a waste bin. Uh, you'll want to dump this or it will creep up on you. Um, although you still will have to get rid of your own bottles. For some reason, it doesn't empty bottles. But like I said, which is good because you can turn around and sell them anyways. So here I got a little bit of everything. I got two different types of weed going here. I got cannabis sativa and cannabis indica. Um, although I haven't really found any more sativa uh, seeds. So here my weed plant again has already produced the 70. So I'm going to go ahead and, and take it. I don't have any more seeds 
uh, anywhere. That's why that is red, so I can't make any more weed just yet at this place. But I can go ahead and extract what I got. And then come back here, just like I was showing you. So I got 35, 70, and 10. So we'll go make this 80. Craft. All right, at least 35. So we'll go here. 35. Craft. And then as this gets dried, it'll automatically pop into my inventory. Boss's desk helpful. Show your status on all the islands. Uh, I, I can't tell you what each star gets you yet on all of them. Uh, I think two is ideal for most perks, but I don't know. Don't quote me on that. Street cred is good. Beat up people when you see them on the streets. Buy a crowbar. Uh, watch out for people who are armed or in large groups. But generally, you can take a crowd of two or three unarmed people with a crowbar or shovel or something pretty easily. One of my workers. Oh, she's got $195,000 for me. I'll take that. Uh, do it yourself desk. Again, the lockers, essential. So you need to have the lockers to have a worker to have them deal or do whatever you need to do. So. Alright, well, that's about it. Good luck.